it is necessary that we continue to have a perspective because Shade Room will never go back over this component of the story because it doesn't fit their narrative. It doesn't fit what they want to sell to the majority female audience. That anything else outside of the truth is permissible. That this woman was possibly lying, that she was making shit up. Because a day ago, this narrative received one million likes. I don't condone picking up a brick and hitting a bitch. <laughs> I thought, that's, that's, that's not a part of my repertoire. Okay, but put the bricks down into the chat. Continue, continue, continue. Chat, don't play with me. Put the bricks down into the goddamn chat. I will see nothing but red walls. Show me love, support, and respect. Also, guys, I know you guys just entered into the room and you want to partake into the conversation. Do me a favor, hit, a, hit on the like button so that we can ensure that this content gets out to as many people as, as possible. Because trust me, the information that we're getting ready to go over right now regarding the background of this lovely young lady needs to get out there, needs to get exposed, needs more eyes on it. How many women in your life sent you this video? How many? How many sent you this video? Look at this shit. Casting doubt on your brethren. As if this shit was 100% and completely true. Unabated, unprotected black women getting assaulted for no goddamn reason. Nothing at all. That's the narrative. Let's stomp that narrative out as a team, as an empty army. Click on the like button. Share this goddamn video. Let's go through Shade Room, where I saw that this content came up first. Of the lovely young hood booger. Woman gets hospitalized after being hit in the face with a brick by a man she refused to give her number to. The incident occurred in Houston, Texas. She says she was surrounded by men who did absolutely nothing. She says the man got into the car and left the scene after assaulting her and is afraid he will never get caught. Sure you are, you scammer. What are we supposed to do? That just broke my heart so bad, ladies. Please carry weapons. I actually believe in this one. I think women should carry weapons. I am a Second Amendment, full Second Amendment supporter. I think ladies should carry weapons. Okay? But that's different. That's a different conversation for a different discussion that doesn't involve a scammer. Okay? 33,000 likes. <laughs> Let's keep going. Brit Iadi says, Who raised these boys? Because these aren't men. Queen Naja says, wow, this is terrible. That man needs to be located and charged 54,000 likes. I'm so disgusted by the men who didn't even speak up for her. Oh, are you? You're disgusted by them? Because they made rational decisions by what they saw? Because they don't romanticize what violence actually is? The danger that they could put themselves in? You're disgusted by them? What would you do? What would you do? So you were disgusted by a man making a decision that even you wouldn't partake in. But you're disgusted? Why? You're disgusted. Because that's not what a real man should do. Women like this live in a, fairy, in a fantasy land. They live in a fairy tale. They live in a place where they are simply privileged. Where they don't have to think about violence. They've never had to use their hands in combat. They've never been in a fight. Not a real fight, maybe a girl fight where you get slapped in your face, but not a real fight where you might die. But you were disgusted by that. Guys, let me tell you guys a short, quick story. I got a ton of these stories, by the way. Okay? I was about nine or so years old. I was in Burlington Coat Factory with my father. Okay? We frequented Payless in Burlington Coat Factory. Okay? That was our, that was our two go-tos, Okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about pay less shoes back in the day. We used to get a free basketball with, a, with like two shoes or more, right? <laughs> that, that pay less. Burlington Coat Factory. We were online at Burlington Coat Factory ahead of this couple behind us. The couple behind us, the woman was impatient as fuck and was putting her goddamn shit 
on the uh, on the conveyor belt while we were at the end of the conveyor belt. I'm like nine years old, okay? And I'm watching my father get impatient and pissed at her getting in our space, getting in our circle, getting in our aura. We move a little bit down and she continues to hound us. My father said something to the young woman, the boyfriend came around the young woman and got into my father's face, got into my father's face. When he got into my father's face, my father looked at me and he said, step back to me, told me to step back. So I stepped back again. I'm nine years old. I'm prepubescent. I was a very skinny young kid. <laughs> there ain't nothing that I could do. You understand me? So there's the girl, there's me, and then there's the guy who looked like some type of bodybuilder, and he's now in my father's face. My father said to him in multiple times in their back and forth exchange, because the guy was going off, completely going off, that my father had the audacity to claim space from this young woman that was inside of our space. My father said to him multiple times, you were about to make the biggest mistake in your life. Eventually, security, car, security guards went and got the guy uh, and like separated all of us. We continued to pay. My dad continued to pay for whatever items that we had and we walked outside the store. My father said, listen, if he's in the parking lot, just go wait by the front door of Burlington Coat Factory. Just wait there for me. That's all he said to me. The guy ended up not being out there when we walked outside of the store. Here's what I know about my father. Knowing him, and we were at his funeral, all of his friends that came up and said something to me, my father was a fighter. He was a fighter. They, had multi they, uh, they all had stories of multiple fights and people that he's beaten up throughout his childhood. He loved to fight, okay? If I was not there in that store with my father, he would have gotten into a physical fight with that man, without a doubt. But guess what? I was there. I was there. So as a father, he had to make a fatherly decision. As a father, with the context of his son being there and knowing that I'm looking at him as an example, he had to make a fatherly decision to not get into a fight with this guy as I was looking there. And he chose to be the bigger man even though he loves to fight. He loves to kick ass. He chose to be the bigger man. Was I disgusted that my father didn't get into a fight or defend me as a child? No, I wasn't. I wasn't disgusted. And especially later on in life, as I thought about that situation and knowing how my father thinks about things and knowing that his number one priority is to protect me. You don't know of any of these young men that were standing around this goddamn scammer. If they had their sons there, if they had their sons at home, they get locked up protecting her dumb ass. Who's there to protect their family? Who's there? But that's all the that you young, modern, sociopathic women see. All you see is situation, lying ass story. Fuck men. That's it. There's no other further consideration that goes beyond that. But that's what a father has to do. That's what it means to be a father. You cannot conduct yourself as a young 20 single, uh, single young man. Because now you're a father. Now you have responsibilities. If my father got locked up over some dumb shit that some chick started, what was going to happen to me? Huh? But you're disgusted. But you're disgusted. It is necessary that we continue to have a perspective because Shade Room will never go back over this component of the story because it doesn't fit their narrative. 
It doesn't fit what they want to sell to the majority female audience. That anything else outside of the truth is permissible. That this woman was possibly lying. That she was making shit up. Because a day ago, this narrative received one million likes for both men and women alike from a scammer because you're unable to separate your emotions from the bullshit. And it's really disappointing to see. This chick played y'all for a fool. And I'm disappointed even after doing all of this content within the space here today, that y'all are still falling for it. You're still falling for the narratives. But that's why it's so important that we have these sections and portions of the internet to continue to expose you for your bullshit. So everyone that's down to the chat right now, hit on the like button, donate to the platform, so we can continue to invest into making sure that these stories get absolutely exposed. It is my opinion, after looking at all of the bullshit, all of the evidence, that she is a liar. She might have gotten hit in the face with the brick, but she didn't tell us the entire component of the story. And not only that, but she has a history of bullshit. But y'all fell for it, hook, line, and sinker. And enough is enough. Hey.